we're at the Nordic farm village. Now a few weeks ago, I approached the chef, Franck Dangereux, owner of the Food Barn restaurant, to see if he'd be interested in hosting an exhibition of my photographic art. The show is titled Foraging Photons and comprise of different organic elements that I found on the mountains around here. So it's very much a locally sourced show. I want to create a body of images that offers a refuge for the imagination of the world in these complex times. This is a picture of a wood bluet mushroom, which is a common edible in South Africa. But I found this particular specimen at the very top of Table Mountain, which is unusual. And this, this was the mushroom that gave me the idea to approach the restaurant to show my work. Now, photographers often talk about capturing an image. And in this instance, I felt like I was being captured by the subject, which is a, which is a difference that I like to make with my photography. So after, after finding this, I felt like I was seeing the world through lilac-tinted glasses, and it was like a love affair. So I want to introduce you to one of the, the signature pieces for the show, which I've titled Small Gods. It originally started as a, as a little bird called a Cape Whiteye, which is a very common bird around here that I found dead in our garden. And I wanted to create, um, I wanted to create an image that, that created a cosmology for this little bird which had, had deceased from our physical sphere. Um, but it obviously then developed into a piece which incorporated many more different elements which were also found and gathered from, from our valley. So this, this section here is, is another bird called the Hardidar ibis, covered in a kind of morning, morning dew. Um, this is a, a plant which grows locally called a, a blushing bride and here we've got all sorts of different proteas and burnt, burnt sections of other plants from, from the Cape Mountain fires the other day. If you even go very closely in here, all sorts of dewy grass droplets and other things to, to add little embellishments into the picture. It's a great theme behind what I do to, to preserve a cosmology for humanity that is not all about destroying the planet. I really want to, to create something that, that young people can, can actually look at and, and feel good about humanity. So for me, finding things that have left this physical sphere and bringing, bringing an entirely new, new existence for them is an important part of what I do. There was a time when the link between humans, the land and animals was fluid and magical. Now environmental discussions these days seem to be very concerned about what kind of world we're going to hand on to, our, to the next generation. But my work is more concerned with what kind of cosmology we want to hand on, what kind of story about our place in the world. And all the climate statistics are not making us fall in love. They're numbing us out. We're living in a time where we really need to be raised up. So that's really what I'm doing here, is to try and fall in love with the Earth again. I'm particularly drawn to this image, which I've called Maze Gill Myth. 
Now, it's constructed from three different kinds of mushrooms, which I found on Table Mountain. Um, this section here is from, a, is from a mushroom called a maize gill bracket fungus, which grows on old pine logs from, from pine trees that have been removed for the forest to make way for indigenous flora. Now, a labyrinth for me always takes me into a place where it really reminds me of how what life is. You know, you have all these different these different turns, and it's not easy to find find the way to wholeness. But for me, this particular image is is drawing me into a place that makes me feel uh, incredibly fulfilled. This is a new series which I've called Strata Spherical and is inspired by time in nature with my children, looking at things through magnifying glasses or into rock pools, experiences of nature that I consider to be non-separate from the natural world. Now, these are framed in eucalyptus wood and you can rotate the frames as well. So the idea is that the artwork is never actually complete because the viewer can then rotate as and when accordingly. So, so the art continues to live and breathe on the wall because you can keep changing. This is really an attempt to release a new kind of magic into the world. A movement that is not just intellectual but is spiritual for a new human presence in the biosphere.